My name is Ender Black, and um, I run the show Squirrel Snow monthly, 8 to 10 p.m. And I've been at KBU volunteering and doing content for six years. What brought you to KBU? Okay, so I was brought here. I was part of a music program at NEA, and, um, and they sent us all here on a field trip. And, well, I didn't know anything about KBU or radio, and they introduced me to Rose City Native Radio and to Jackie Malstrom. And uh, we met, and I started working with her, creating a se I, I created a segment that for it ran uh, for quite a while, weekly. It was Roar of the Earth. And, um, and that was my segment at KBU. That, um, it was, it was um, very interesting to me to voice all, all those things uh, for the first time, yeah. How would you best describe the show that you do, and how did you decide on the content? Well, Squirrel Snow is about, it's about putting a seed on people's minds about the, the place of our planet and our place in our galaxy and the universe. Um, I know that uh, a lot of people actually think about these subjects a lot, about the place of Earth and the galaxy and the universe and other people that are not from Earth. And this is very interesting content for a lot of people. But um, I started kind of focusing on this since, actually since the pandemic started in March. Uh, something really hit, you know, because before that I didn't really have a direction with the show. I used to just play music. Um, it was just kind of uh, entertaining. I, I, would, I would try to make it entertaining. Since the pandemic started in March, something hit me and, and I started um, doing something that I wanted to do for a while, which was explore the uh, concept of star people based on the Native American tradition and the tradition from many other, many other uh, places in the world. And, um, and, and I, felt, I felt the real need to just do that, to only focus on that, on this show. So I think um, basically I chose this subject because it's very interesting to me, but also because I, I think it's important for anyone listening to see that perspective of people outside Earth, which is an ancient concept. Um, it, it, it's, it was known for, it was known as a fact that life would extend beyond planet Earth and that it was, it was known as a fact. Star people, the concept of star people or people from the stars or people from different planets and galaxies have been accepted as a fact by Native American nations and many other people throughout the world for thousands of years. So um, uh, I just wanted to explore that um, because, well, at the time, March 2020, I felt that, wow, we are going through something huge and different. Um, I feel that um, this would be a good time for us to get some necessary aid um, from, uh, from our family, from the stars, you know? And, um, and, and that's how I started, um, yeah. <laughs> So you've said as an indigenous person that you were traditionally raised in that culture. How do you incorporate that into the show that you do? You've already talked about star people. Yeah. Is there more? Can well, you expand on that? Well, yeah, yeah. I, like you said, I was raised, um, uh, I was always homeschooled, meaning that I never attended any public school or any school of any kind, really. I was, I was homeschooled. It became normal for, for me. I know it might not be too normal for a lot of people, but it just became absolutely normal for me. And, um, and um, because I was educated like that, um, at the time I was living with my father, and uh, although he was educated, you know, as a physicist in the Western culture tradition, you know, a military um, man, I guess, um, it, it, a big part of our lives, a huge, I would say 65% of our lives was delving into Native American uh, tradition, as in, in the, the, the Native American way of existing and experiencing life in ancient times, which is not really known uh, for most people. Most people just see, most people just see the surface, things that people make, you know, like artwork or or arts and crafts, maybe music, you know, but it's, it was more, a lot more than that. It was this incredible connection to nature, to our ecosystems in a way that is really difficult to explain because we're not there. So it would be, 
almost impossible to really comprehend that connection that they had. So I was I was thought that I, I was taught that since 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 day one, and um, it kind of really began to sink in. You know, as you know, as I grew older with the segment on Rose City Native Radio, I, I explored I explored uh, all those things, and then. Um, well, since March 2020, with all this stuff in the world, I decided to to really explore it even further. Stuff that I already knew, stuff that I've learned, stuff that I, I use my intuition to obtain that knowledge too. Um, so um, that's how it all started. It's about it's about putting out, putting forward information that in our Western culture is not present. Because again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because our culture, everybody knows that. I've, I, I think I repeat myself on the show a lot, but that, that's okay. Um, it's uh, our culture is heavily separated from nature and each other, and um, and it's very sad. And this is why this is why we have the situations that we have right now in the world. It's uh, it's a mess. It it seems that we're hyper organized, and we are, but at the same time, it's it's uh, there's no real path. Uh, we're all on different paths, and and um, and I've realized that since a few years ago, and uh, and I know that the best way to move forward is to embrace this connection to nature, which in my show, in Squirrel Snow, I explore that we can't do that by ourselves, uh, and we can do it with the aid and support of our star family, and that's how it's going to happen, guys, <laughs> and. Um, and yeah, so that's 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 why, yeah, that's. What is your opinion on the pandemic and the shutdowns that have been continued, as far as people being separate? There's more of an, a push of needing people to get together. What do you have to say about that? something that people would be really valuable to look at, you know, that we're not separate, that we are really one. And that is something that if we start thinking along those lines, there might be more of a harmonic existence rather than separatism or separating. And if the, this whole pandemic is, is a, it's a real problem, right? And it's hard to explain. Um, regardless of the cause of the pandemic, you know, the the truth is that what we went through i think personally um we went through lockdowns and people um not being able to see each other you know even even now i mean now it's starting to go back kind of go back to normal um but yeah the whole point of being separate because there's a pandemic and we have to protect you know in theory it could become like a real disaster it could have become a real disaster in theory if we hadn't had that lockdown procedure and all that stuff um, I think I think and this is just my view I think it was a positive thing it has been a positive thing to have people just not do the things they usually do um, it's been documented that during the, the real lockdown the real global lockdown that lasted maybe four or five weeks only it was a real lockdown where people actually in many countries especially Europe were actually illegal, was actually legal for you to go outside your house. That never happened in America, I don't think, but it did happen in other countries. Um, it's been documented that nature, in just that one period of time, things got a lot better for nature. Uh, many different life forms, whales, birds, turtles, it's been documented, and you can look it up, they were able to, um, the, the breeding seasons were much more effective than other years. Uh, the air was a lot cleaner, even in countries like China or India, who have pollution that goes beyond levels, um, beyond, <laughs> beyond even what we understand as pollution. Uh, even in those countries, the pollution went down to like 60%. I saw a video the other day of a, um, um, a person in India, there's a town in India, or a big city in India, I don't remember what, what it's called, but it's uh, basically has the Himalayas in the back. And they've never seen the Himalayas. In, well, they have, but in like 40 years they haven't because of pollution. Wow. So people, kids have never seen, they, they didn't even know there was a Himalaya, the Himalayas 
mountain range was behind them. They they never seen it. So during the lockdown, actually the 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 pollution went down so low that people could see the mountain range. You know things like that. Um, and these are documented facts. And um, so in that sense, I I am positive that it was a very very good thing for the world, uh, for nature, uh, which is my m most important kind of my, my main thing that I care about uh, because I know it's kind of like the basis of many problems that we have is this disregard for nature, destruction mm -hmm. of nature. I talk about this on my show all the time, reminding everybody that we are in this consistent destruction of ecosystems and that that, that is a no-no. We can't be doing that for, for too long. What would it take to get people to actually, and how important it is, to preserve like as an example, they could see the mountain, right? Because the air was clear. I would think that it shouldn't take much more than that for a light to go on, but do you think there's some hesitancy in people? Well, uh, most people in the world, unfortunately, because of, and I talk about this in Squirrels Know as well, uh, because of our outdated global financial system and how that's a mystery. People don't know how it works, that they don't know where money comes from. But the fact is that our global financial system is very outdated. And, um, and that has pushed people throughout the world to fight for survival. They have to work and work and work and work and work. And when people are put in that state, because I've seen it in myself and I've seen it in other people close to me, your mind, you just don't have time for, th for thoughts of this nature. Yeah. You know, because people, especially in poor countries, but also in America, they're, they just have to work to survive, to feed their kids, to feed their animals, and they just don't have time to deal with these truths. So um, it's not hesitancy, it's just, uh, it's a, it's a, it has been a very poor way of managing global affairs. Yeah. What would you say to um, people, especially young people, who have an interest in going into radio, what words of encouragement would you have for them? The words of encouragement are simple. Do it. It's the best thing you can do for your brain, and I'm telling you this based on my own experience, the best thing you can do for your brain this day and age for our generation, Gen Z, is to turn off the camera and do audio content. Because when you focus on what you're saying, regardless of what you look, what people think that you look, uh, when you focus on the words, what you're saying, and just that, that's when you can really tap into your best self, in my view, when it comes to communicating things, if you want to communicate things properly. And, uh, and I know that a lot of people do amazing work on, on video platforms, you know, like video, popular video platforms like YouTube, uh, and they, they talk amazing things, and they do amazing work, and it's video. But I tell you, just to start with, based on my own experience, on radio, because you're focusing on audio and what you're saying, um, it, it's, a, it's a very, very effective way of growing as a person. So if you want to just get involved with radio, just do it, because it's going to be really good for your brain. And one last question. What is it that squirrels know? I had an experience that changed my life. And it is that um, it was a few years ago, and long story short, we ended up with a baby squirrel that fell off his nest um, up in our attic. And, um, and at that time, I, you know, nobody knew. The house was full. It was like a holiday. You know, people were there, relatives. Uh, and uh, nobody knew what to do with baby squirrel. And uh, they came to me, and I didn't know what to do with baby squirrel, but my instinct my instinct was very clear. So, okay, I have to do something, anything. So I'm going to try. You know, I did my best to, to put the baby squirrel in a, in a place up a tree and uh, so the mom could go and get the baby squirrel. And, uh, but as you might imagine by now, that didn't happen. So I ended up uh, rehabbing, what's called rehabbing, the squirrel uh, back to health. So that experience changed my life because... Although I have, a, have had a connection with animals before, with my cat, for example, which were like this. Uh, with the wild animals, it, it's never been like that. So it is squirrels now because 
that squirrel really just helped me reconnect to all the other wildlife in the world just like that just like that that's when it really clicked the problem that we have on the planet the value of all other life forms because people you know people are in their coffee shops and computers and stuff and cars and and a lot of people don't even think that wildlife are beings like us you know mm -hmm. but they are and this is the main thing that i i want to i want everybody to uh, at least entertain you know and then again this goes back to ancient native american understanding of things but also ancient every culture is that is that other beings are just like us beings so what squirrels know is that is that uh, i know that that i know where they're coming from that i know i know about the wildlife who they are and and I, i'm with them and i'm not going anywhere so i'm, I'm, I'm the, one of the, their best allies in the human world they know that i mean the times on earth are difficult no matter what no matter what time 100 years ago 200 years ago uh, earth has always been about struggle pain upside down concepts it's it's so and people think it's normal but uh, I uh, all I have to say is that stay positive try to stay optimistic uh, focus on the best part of yourself and um, and just open yourself to embrace whole new things in the years ahead in the months and years ahead because things are gonna switch around radically so that's 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 the only thing I, I want to say just Open yourself to some massive, massive change in our reality here on Earth. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time to come and talk with us. Thank today. you. I love Kebu.